Hello, I'm Kay from the Spectra team and in this video I will teach you how to build the homepage of our website. Now this video is part of a course organized in a playlist, for which you will find a link in the description below. And if you want to get the most out of it, I strongly encourage you to follow this course in the exact order the videos are organized in the playlist. Now in order to help you complete this project, you'll find the link in the description of this video where you can download the course files. Now for this course we will be using the free version of Spectra so even if you use the free version, you can totally complete the course website project. But if you're using the pro version of Spectra, I will even show you how you can further enhance your pages. And if you're wondering what are the differences between Spectra and Spectra Pro, well Spectra and its free version is already awesome. But with Spectra Pro, you get features like dynamic content and the loop builder to build custom dynamic websites, the pop-up builder with unlimited creativity, enhanced animation to bring your website to life, image gallery pro for additional features like one-click redirects, Instagram blocks to add your Instagram feed into your website, countdown timers to boost conversion, slider pro to add stunning sliders, user registration and user login to customize these essential WordPress forms, models to create modern and customizable models, global block styles, and much, much more. So if you want to build amazing websites with Spectra Pro, check out the link in the description below. Now, as you may recall, at the beginning of this course, we imported a ready-made website with the starter templates plugin. This ready-made website came with the home page, the about page, the services page, and the contact page. And today we will be editing the home page so that it matches our brand and our content. Ready? So let's get started. And first of all, you want to go to pages, all pages, then hover over home and click on edit. All right. So this is the page that was imported with our ready-made design from starter templates. And the first thing we're going to do is click on the document overview icon and we're going to rename our containers. So let's open our project files folder. Let's go to the text subfolder and here we're going to open the home text file. And as you can see here, the containers titles are in caps lock throughout the document. So we're just going to copy and paste it to rename our containers. That will make it easier for organization purposes. So let's start with the first one, hero container. Let me right click and copy. Then here for the first container, click on the three dots, hit rename, and let's just paste and save. Now I'm going to use the same technique and repeat the operation for all the other containers. Alright, so now we have all our containers renamed and as I mentioned, that's going to make it way easier in the long run. Alright, so let me collapse this and first let's select our hero container, our first container. And if you did not watch the previous video about the foundations of Spectra, I strongly encourage you to go and watch that video because everything we're going to do from that point on relies on that video. Okay, so let's click on the style tab, change image and we're going to choose this image right here. Next, click on select. All right, so next we need to change our text. And once again, we're just going to copy and paste from the course text file. So first I'm going to click here. And as we can see here, this is an info box block. So let me copy the first line. Then still with my info box block selected, I'm going to select the first line, right click and paste. Let me repeat the operation, copy, and I don't know about you, but I go faster with keyboard shortcuts. So basically command plus C on a Mac to copy and command plus V to paste. And on a Linux or Windows PC, it's going to be control plus C to copy and control plus V to paste. All right, let me select this line, paste, line number three, and paste. Next, we're still in general content. Where is the alignment? We're going to select right. Now, as you can see here, the text is not quite where it should be. So let's go to style, description, and for the margin, we're going to keep it at zero all around. All right, much better. And let's close the document overview for a moment. And as you can see, all is looking good, except that our call to action button, first of all, is not really readable or visible. 
and also it's way too close from that line. So still with our info box selected and still in style description, click on the pixel unit and for the bottom value, let's change it to 30. All right, much better. Okay, now let's take care of our button. So first of all, I'm going to double click on the text and change the text to discover. And now let's go back to the general tab. So let's collapse this and let's click on the call to action sub tab. And the first thing you want to do is to toggle off the inherit from theme option, then scroll down, click on button icon, and we're going to type Chevron down. Let's pick this one and click on insert icon. Now you can't really see it right now, but that's what we're going to fix. Next, where you see link, you want to keep the pound sign and we're going to type services. Now this is an anchor link, which just means that it's going to take us to another spot on the same page. More about that later. Next, click on the style tab. Now let's collapse the description sub tab and let's open the call to action sub tab. Next, click on typography. And for the font size, you want to make it 13 pixels. And in the transform dropdown, you want to select uppercase. Now let's close this. Now the button text color should be set to color number six. And the hover color should be set to color number five. Next, you want to click back on the normal tab. And where you see background color, you want to select color number five. Now click on the hover tab. And for the background color of the button, you want to select color number six. Next, where you see border in the drop down, you want to select solid. Now let's scroll down. Let's keep the width at one all around. And where you see radius, you want to type 30 all around. Next, where you see color in the normal sub tab, you want to select color number five. And in the hover tab, select color number six. So now as you can see, when we hover over our button, it's looking way better. All right, let's click on update to save our work. Okay, so we're done for the hero container. But if you recall earlier on, I told you that when we click this button, that would take us to an anchor link. So to another spot on the same page. And if we go back to general, as you can see, the link is pound sign services. So for this, I'm going to scroll down, make sure I select my second main container here. And once again, if you want to be sure, open the document overview. And now it's super handy because we renamed everything. So all you need to do is click on services container, then go to advanced. Once again, advanced. And where you see HTML anchor, I'm just going to type services without the pound sign. Very important. When you link to it, you need to put the pound sign. But here we're just naming the anchor. That will make sense in a moment. So let's click on update. And now let's preview our page by clicking on this icon. All right. And now if you click on discover, as you can see, it took us smoothly to the services container. All right. So let's go back to editing our page and let's take care of our services container. And let's start with the text. So same technique. I'm just going to copy and paste. First line. And let me replace it. And let's do the same for the rest of the text. So now let's take care of our images. So let me select the first image, then click on change image and let's select this image. Click on select. Now let's repeat the operation for the second image, change image. Let's pick this image, click on select and last but not least third image, change image. And let's pick this one here, then click on select. Now, if you recall earlier on, I talked about brand consistency. And that's what we want to do. So we're going to start with the images. So let me click on this image, the first one. Then let's go to style. And where you see border radius, we're going to give it a border radius of five pixels all around. And if you're looking at this on the phone, you might not see it, but actually we have very slightly rounded corners here on the image. And that's going to be part of our branding. And next I could repeat the operation for the other images, but there's a better way. 
So with my image selected, as you can see, there is a bar here with options. So I'm going to click on this icon, which is the Spectra copy paste icon. And I'm just going to click on copy style. And I'm going to click on the second image. And in the same option bar, I'm going to click on the same icon, but now I'm going to hit paste style. And there you go. So let's repeat the operation for the third image and paste style. And as you can see, that's a much better way when you have to do repetitive tasks. You can just use the copy and paste style option. All right, let's click on update to save our work. Now the page is starting to look really good, but I would like to add something. I would like to add a call to action to this container. First of all, because it's a proven tactic, it's better if you add call to actions throughout your page. And the second reason is that for the people browsing your website on a smartphone, and there are a lot, well, it may be a better user experience. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a call to action button right below here, and we're going to put it inside a container. So let's take a look here in the document overview. I'm first going to collapse. So this is our services container. You see our title here. And in this container, you see three sub containers, each with the image and the text respectively. So I'm going to collapse this container. And next I'm going to click on the plus sign and click on container. And now if I open my document overview, we can see it added a container right below our container with the images. Next, I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to start typing buttons. And as you can see, we have two different blocks here. The first one has a black outline and is from WordPress core, whereas the second one is from Spectra. So let's click on the second one. Now, let me double click on the text. Then let me go to our text file and I'm just going to copy the label testimonials and just paste it here. Next, let me click on the content sub tab within general. And for the link, I'm going to keep the pound sign and type testimonials all in lowercase. Next, let me click on style. And first of all, let's click on the text sub tab and let's set the normal color to color number six and the hover color to color number nine. Next, click on the typography edit icon and let's set the font size to 13 pixels. And where you see transform in the drop down, select uppercase. Now let's close this and let's open the icon sub tab. For the normal color, let's select color number six and for the hover color, color number nine. Next, click on the background sub tab. Normal color should be set to color number five and the hover color should be set to color number four. Next, click on the border sub tab. Let's give it a radius of 30 pixels all around. And for the border color, let's select color number five. And for the hover state of the border color, let's select color number four. All right, so now if we hover over it, looking good. Let's click on update to save our work. All right, so now let's move on to our testimonials container. And just like before, first of all, we're going to select our testimonials container here in the document overview. Then we're going to go to advanced HTML anchor, and we want to match what we put in the button link. So if you're not sure, let's go back here in the document overview. Let me click on button general. Now let me scroll down to content and you can see here it says testimonial. So the best way to not make a mistake is to just copy it, but without the pound sign. So I'm just going to copy this and now let's go back to our testimonials container, advanced, advanced, and in the HTML anchor field, I'm just going to paste this. Let's click on update. Let's check a preview. That was our first call to action button and here is the second and there you go works as expected all right back in the wordpress admin let's start with changing the text and you know the drill now we're going to copy it from the course text file so first of all i'm going to copy this line and here let me select the whole text and paste now there is some more text right here just below the image but we're not going to change it all right now let's take care of images now you can see it because the bar is hiding it, but let me click somewhere else. As you can see here, there is an image. So I'm just going to select that image and then I could go to general, click on change image. But another way you can do it is just click on replace here in the options toolbar. So let me do that and click on open media library. Next, I'm going to select this image and click on select. 
there you go okay next we have this image here we're not going to change it but basically if we wanted to change it we would click here and as you can see it's not an image block it's an info box block so it doesn't really change much you have the option here click on change image open the media library and select the image you want to change it for but we're not going to do this now let's take care of the colors of our text because it's not really readable right now so still with our info box block selected let's go to style let's collapse this let's click on the title sub tab and for the color we're going to choose color number six now let's close this let's close the title sub tab and let's open the description sub tab and this time for the color we're going to pick color number nine all right this is way better now let's move on to the about container so i'm just going to collapse this and click on my about container and as usual let's start by changing the text with the text provided in the course files Okay, so we've changed the label of the button here, but this time I want to link to an actual page, not to an anchor link on the same page. So for that, let's click on general. Next, click on call to action and scroll down to where you see link. We're going to remove the pound sign and this is where we're going to paste our link. So let me click on updates. Let's go back to the WordPress dashboard. And here we are in pages, all pages. So hover over the about page and where you see view, you want to right click and click on copy link. Now let's go back to editing our home page. So hover over home, click on edit and let's scroll back down to our about us button here, call to action. And in the links field, this time we're going to paste and this is our link to our about page. So let's test this. So let's click on updates and let's preview our page. Now, let me scroll down and let's click on the about us button and as you can see it takes us to the appropriate page now let's go back and let's style our button so you know the drill now i'm going to go to style call to action button text color should be set to color number six hover color to color number nine next click on the typography edit icon font size 13 pixels and transform to uppercase next let's click back on the normal tab and for the background type let's select color and the background color should be set to color number five now let's click on the hover sub tab and this time the background color should be set to color number four now let's scroll down and where you see border you want to change the radius to 30 pixels all around and for the normal color, you want to select color number five. And for the hover color, color number four. Now there is one more thing we can add here. We can actually show the user that this is taking us somewhere else and not down on the page. So for that, let me go back to the general tab, call to action, show icon, then click on the plus sign. And this time we're looking for Chevron right. So let's pick this icon and click on insert icon so now as you can see it's looking way better okay the only thing left to do is to take care of our image so let me click on the image hit replace in the toolbar open media library and let me pick this image here click on select and there you go so let's click on update to save our work and let's move on to the last container on the page which is if we open the document overview call to action banner container so let me close this and first of all with our main container selected let's go to general and where you see minimum height you want to select the vh units and change the value to 75 all right now as usual let's start by changing the text with the text provided in the course files Okay, next with our info box block selected, you want to go to style, spacing, and where you see padding, you want to change the right value to 
12% and the left value also to 12%. Next, still in the style tab, click on title and for the color you want to pick color number six and let's repeat the operation for the description, color number six. Next, click on the general tab, call to action and toggle off the inherit from theme option. Now let's scroll down to where it says link. And here we want to link to the contact page. So once again, let me click on update to save our work. Let's go back to the dashboard in pages, all pages. Let's hover over contact, view, right click and copy the link. Now let's go back to editing our homepage. Let me scroll back down select our info box, then general, call to action. Let me scroll down to link. I'm going to remove the pound sign and just paste what we just copied. Now let's click on the style tab, call to action, and let's set the button text color in its normal state to color number five and in its hover state to color number six. Now let's click back on the normal sub tab and for the background color, we want to set it to color number six. And now let's click on the hover sub tab and we want to set the background color to color number four. Now let's scroll down to border. For the style, select solid. We can leave the width at one pixel all around. And for the border radius, it's going to be 30 pixels all around. The normal border color should be set to color number six and the hover border color should be set to color number four. Next, select the main container. And if you want to be sure, once again, click on the document overview icon and select your container here. Now let me close this. Then let's go to style, change image, and we're going to select this image here. Then click on select. All right, we're getting there, but as you can see here, the text is not really readable. So let's fix this. So still in style, background, I'm going to scroll down and where you see overlay type, select the second icon, gradient. Now let me scroll down. So here for the first color, let's click on it. We're going to use color number four. And for the second color, we're going to use color number five. Now let's close this. And where you see overlay opacity, we want to set it at 0, 0,5. All right, so let's click on update to save our work and let's preview our page. Okay, so if I click on discover, I get to the My Services container. Then clicking here, I get to the testimonials. Then I have my About Us container and finally our Call to Action banner. Now it's looking good, but there are a couple of things we need to change. Let me scroll back up. So the first thing we want to change is the height of our hero section here. And the second is the visibility of the menu. Now here on this page, it's very visible. But as I mentioned earlier on in the course, we want to make sure we can address this because we might have some pictures with a lighter background and we want our menu to always be visible. So let's go back to editing our page. Let's select our hero section, then go to the general tab. And where you see minimum height, you want to click on the VH unit and change the value to 85. Now let's click on update and let's preview our page. Okay, much better. Now let's take care of the second issue. So back to editing our page. This time, still with our main container here selected, you want to go to style. Then let's scroll down and where you see overlay type, you want to click on the second icon, gradient. And now for the first color, you can pick pretty much any color. Then you're going to drag the opacity slider all the way to the left to make it completely transparent. All right. And now for the second color, we're going to choose color number four. So let's close this. And next for the overlay opacity, you can do this on a case by case basis. But let me play with the slider here and let's stop at 0.8. So let me click on update and let's preview our page. And as you can see, our menu is way more readable than before. And for the record, this was before and this is now. Now on this image, it's not really dramatic because it was already readable with this image. 
even though here you can see the difference. But just imagine if you have an image with a lighter background, at least your menu is going to be readable and visible. Now, just notice one more thing, and that's the way you should approach it when you build websites. The plan was great, but now I can see there's too much space here between the image and our first title, but it's super easy to fix. So back in editing our page, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to select the second container here. As usual, if you want to be sure, just check it with the document overview panel. Then I'm going to go to style, spacing, and where you see padding, I'm going to change the top padding to 40 pixels. Then click on updates and let's check our page now. And there you go, much better. And for the record, this was before and this is after. Now we could stop here, but let me show you how we can spice up our page. So back to editing our page, let me scroll back up. Now let me select my info box, go to advanced animations and let me add a fade up animation. Now let's scroll down here. Let me select this title here. So it's a heading block. Let's go to advanced and add a fade animation. Next, let me select the sub container here. And here I'm going to open the document overview. So as you can see, we have our services container, it has a sub container and three sub containers for each service. So let me select sub sub container one, advanced animations, and let me do a fade right. Now let me select the second sub sub container animations. Let's do a fade animation. And then the sub sub three container animation fade left. Then let me select the button advanced animation and let's do a fade up. Next, let's scroll to the testimonials. First image, advanced animation, fade down. Then for our info block, advanced animation, let's pick fade up. Now let's scroll down. Let's select our info box, advanced animation, fade right. And let's select our image, advanced animation, fade left. Now let's scroll down. And for this one, we're going to select our info box and give it a simple fade. All right, let's click on update and let's preview our page. So you can see we have the animations here. It really brings something to the table, makes it come alive. But now if you're using Spectre Pro, let me do what you can do. So let me scroll down to the My Services container. I'm going to open the document overview. Make sure I select the appropriate container. So this is sub sub container one. So I'm going to go to advanced animations. I'm going to change the animation duration to 800 and the animation delay to 400. Next, let me select sub sub container three animation duration. 800 and the animation delay is going to be 800. Next, let me select my button here, advanced animations. So for the animation, let me select fade up and I want the animation delay to be 1200. Next, let me scroll down here. Let me select my image, advanced animations, I'm going to change the animation duration to 200, then select my info box here, go to advanced animations, and I want an animation delay of 400, and it's 400 milliseconds to be exact. Next, let me scroll down here. Let's select our info box, advanced animations. Let's make the animation duration 600. Then let's select our image. And this time let's change the animation delay to 500. All right, let's click on update and let's preview what we've just done. So let me scroll. And as you can see, I can really time the animations instead of everything happening at the same time. So let me scroll. And as you can see, it catches the attention even more. Now, let me go back to the initial version made with the free version of Spectra. Let me refresh. Now let me scroll down and as you can see, everything happens at the same time. It's looking beautiful, but everything happens at the same time. 
Now let's go back to the Spectral Pro version. As I mentioned, you will see the difference here, but really pay close attention to the animation. So let me refresh. So this is the same, our hero section, but now watch. It's really beneficial if you want to catch your website viewer's attention. So of course, if you're interested in Spectre Pro, you find the link in the description of this video. So as you can see, with the imported ready-made website as well as the course files, building the homepage was a breeze. And it should now give you a pretty good idea of how to edit the rest of the website. And that's precisely what we're going to do because in the next video, we will be building the about page.